Cherry, your experience and your take on this space at the moment. I mean, you set up Founders for Schools for a very particular reason. More broadly, though, you're so involved in technology. Um, so I set up Founders for Schools to try to get role models from the tech industry into the classrooms to help the teachers illustrate the jobs that are being created um, for the children that, uh, that, well, that will be there for when they're finished their formal education. Um, the, it's still the case that classic um, careers were being illustrated and I felt the best careers and the most relevant ones that were creating the jobs weren't, weren't being um, highlighted. Um, I think also I'm on the board of Raspberry Pi and was very keen to, you know, four years ago to sort of highlight them and, um, and encourage them. And Raspberry Pi was created because there had been a decrease in quality and the number of applications for people who were coming to, uh, to Cambridge University. Their skills were lower and there were fewer numbers. And we felt that that was because the technology that they had been using, they weren't fiddling with any longer. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Because of whatever was happening in the schools was not generating creative. It was sealed away, almost dangerous to tamper with. Just, just to remind our guests what Raspberry Pi is, though, just in case we don't know. Okay, Raspberry Pi is a small $25 computer. I think we just shipped our four millionth unit um, out, of, out, of, out of here, out of Cambridge. Uh, it's a licensed model. We started our manufacturing in China and then brought it back here to Wales because we got a higher, um, the, the price was essentially the same, but the quality was higher. Um, the other just thing about um, Raspberry Pi, and one of the things that I'm sort of linking it to um, LinkedIn, uh, is thinking about the jobs that are being created today um, I think John, you mentioned earlier there are 24 different jobs for a millennial throughout their lifetime. So equipping people with skill sets that they need to navigate uh, through life is yep. really, really important. Yep. Just two other things. Um, I am curious about what jobs there will be for these kids. I'm appalled that there are 990,000 open jobs today, more than a million people unemployed. Mm. I'm slightly frightened that the forecast is that in addition to the 990,000 open jobs uh, at scale-up companies, they are saying they can't take a, a customer orders that they have on the books because they cannot find people to help them fill those orders. That is a really bad problem. And what is the single biggest reason those vacancies are open, in your opinion? Uh, because the, the people who uh, are unemployed don't have the correct skill sets. Um, isn't, isn't it just because we're hopeless at recruitment in this country? No, I don't think it is that we're hopeless at recruitment. Okay. It's that they, they, what, the, what the companies themselves are saying is that they can't find people with the right skills. Ah. Just one thought for, for the thing, there was a in the forecast that in addition to the million open jobs, there will be an additional million open jobs in STEM subjects alone um, in the next four years. There's only 50,000 people that study STEM subjects uh, in this country coming out every year. It's astonishingly low, isn't it? Look at that gap stretching forward to the millions in the future. That's not great for our competitive advantage as a nation. And I'm yeah. curious about that problem, and I think I'd like to try to help solve it, which is why uh, I was behind the MOOC. Uh, we mentioned MOOCs earlier, that was launched by Raspberry Pi and CUP and Cambridge Assessment to try to help teachers upskill in, uh, in, in the curriculum that they now had to teach because they've introduced you know, coding at an earlier age here, but there's still a, uh, a catch-up phase needed to equip the teachers to be able to teach the students in the classrooms. So, yeah. Uh, it is an issue around ed tech, but can you use technology to help education make sure that they can navigate the world that they're going to have to navigate, either through formal education, but I'm really excited about informal education as well. I mean, I, I love the panel that we've got. You're focused on teachers, and you're focused on more the informal. Mm. It's a blend.